It's estimated now that each new child being born today will inherit $50,000 or more of debt, which they will have to pay off as they grow, uh, go through their education years and become part of our economy. They're going to have to be saddled with this ever-growing debt. So my three latest grandchildren, Grace, Charlie, and Avery, uh, all young, just a few years old, uh, are inheriting a very significant amount of debt that will saddle their opportunities and stifle their opportunities to participate in the American dream and to have the opportunities that many of my generation have had. Finally, after 1,420 days, after four years, we have a budget before us. And while I'm pleased that that is the case, and I'm pleased that we're here debating that, um, it's disappointing when we learn what that budget offers. You would think after four years, and after the four years that we have been through, and the 23 million people unemployed or underemployed, and the rate of growth of this economy half of what it normally is, you would think that that budget being presented to us here um, would take some steps toward addressing our spending issues uh, and it would not incorporate a trillion or more dollars of increased taxes, which will just simply go to more spending. This budget grows government. Let's not make any uh, excuses. Uh, it grows government by increasing spending, and it grows government by a massive increase in taxes just after we've had one a few months ago. And not counting the massive increase in taxes that's going to occur beginning in 2014 with the implementation of Obamacare. Uh, when we add that up and we look at the cost of that, uh, we face a dire circumstance. And you would think that the budget being offered to us um, would not increase debt by 42 percent, but would address the real, the real problem. Now, I know there's been a dispute about how much uh, this budget uh, revenue is, uh, taxes are increased. Some say a million, a trillion five. Um, those that have presented the budget simply say, oh, no, it's only a trillion. Well, whether it's a trillion five or a tri only, a tri only a trillion, as if only a trillion dollars in new taxes on the American people if they just got hit with more than half a trillion two months ago and are going to get hit with probably another trillion in, another, in less than about eight months as Obamacare kicks in. I mean, it just, it just defies uh, credibility. And I think the investment community and consumers and taxpayers all across America are look at this and say, what in the world are you doing? Now, what are the consequences of this? Well, the Heritage Foundation indicates that the Senate Democrats' budget would cost over 8 million jobs nationwide and 225,000 jobs in my own state over the next 10 years. They estimate that the budget re would reduce economic output by $1.4 trillion and reduce private domestic investment by $820 billion. I think these statistics um, emphasize the fact that the entire mindset behind this budget seems to be how can we find more revenue to fund more government spending rather than how do we grow the economy? Our goal here ought to be grow the economy, not grow an already bloated government with more taxes to pay for more government spending. And this budget never balances the budget. We will never reach the point where our states have had to reach in balancing their budget. The majority of our states have had to pull themselves out of a hole, and they've done so because they are constitutionally mandated by their own state constitution to balance that budget. Families have to balance their budget, and businesses have to balance their budget. Only the federal government, and this, under this plan, never balances the budget. I've been coming to the Senate floor here for day after day after day this year, basically talking about the need for Republicans and Democrats and the President to come together with a bold, credible and enforceable long-term plan to reduce our debt and put our country back on a path toward growth and prosperity. We need to recognize that it will take more than a quick fix. It's going to take more than this uh, soap opera drama of uh, kicking the can down the road, uh, extending uh, the decisions that we have to make for yet another few months 
behind this, behind that, or whatever. It's going to take us, it's going to take the uh, will to roll up our sleeves, stop wasting our time, and instead get to work on a plan that will deliver real results for the American people. Just to conclude, Mr. President, it's been four years since the Senate has passed a budget. The plan before us, in my opinion, has not been worth the wait. It won't help generate more jobs for the more than 23 million Americans either unemployed or underemployed. It won't improve this slow economy. It won't save Medicare and Social Security from going broke. It won't produce a path to bipartisan comprehensive tax reform. It won't ever balance the budget. And it won't help hardworking Americans get back to work and get ahead in this life. We can do better than this. After four years of inaction, the American people deserve better than this plan. The American people elected a divided government. It was not a mandate for either party. It's a challenge, and a challenge that all of us need to accept. So let us act now. Let us summon the courage to stand up and work together on a truly balanced plan, not one that calls for ever more spending and ever higher taxes, but one that puts in place real reforms. The first step? is passing a credible budget. Sadly, in my opinion, this budget doesn't match the need. And so hopefully we can make the adjustments to this to put us on that path to prosperity. And with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor. Mr. President. The Senator from Washington. 